what is happening y'all cowboy here welcome back to another monster hunter rise build video and today we are taking a look at one of my all-time favorite weapons and definitely the weapon i have the most play time with the dual blades now the dual blades are just freaking nuts in rise uh, they have largely retained the world move set so you know our, our multi-demon slash into blade dance uh through the introduction of the switch skills, we now have what is basically aerial dual blades. If you remember that from GU, we can go into the aerial demon flurry, or alternatively, we can do the midair spinning blade dance where we bay blade down the back of the monster like we're a character in Attack on Titan. And then last but not least, and my personal favorite, which I think a lot of people are sleeping on this, if you played GU, you may remember this ability. That is right, we have an adept dodge. So back in GU, there was a style of dual blades known as Adept Dual Blades, where basically, anytime you would dodge, you would just spin through attacks like that. Uh, it allowed you to have like just super high frames and get in free damage. We have that back with Dual Blades, which is just delicious. Uh, through the addition of Feral Demon Mode, every time we dodge now, we're getting damage, so we're just even like even more aggressive than normal. This also gives us a physical buff. And anyway, the point is, Dual Blades are just nuts. Um, and also, you'll notice no Narcacuga weapon. That's right, we are going Element. Um, element is not viable with a lot of weapons in rise but dual blades are one of the weapons where it does shine and we are going to be taking full advantage of that with five different elemental dual blade builds that we're looking at today now there are a couple different approaches to element um, there are three approaches in particular that i want to discuss uh, you basically have crit element focused you have element attack hybrid and then you have uh, handicraft versions so for the purpose of these builds, I have gone ahead and done almost all crit element focused. I'm going to be taking a look at some of the other builds to better explain them. But the crit element versions are pretty straightforward. Uh, we want to maximize our elemental attack, in this case, Thunder Attack 5. We want Weakness Exploit at 3. We want crit element at 3. And then we want to stack as much crit eye as possible. So with this, I have 25% crit eye coming in. I obviously have Wex, uh, and that puts me up to a 75% crit chance to have crit element proc. Now, Crit Element has been largely nerfed since Iceborne. You may remember True Crit Element, I believe, was like 70%, and we're down to only 15% here, but Element in general has been buffed. So because of that, 15% Crit Element is still pretty significant. Um, now, almost every dual blade build, you're gonna want some form of sharpness management. I personally like Razor Sharp. I think that is the least impact. You know, you don't gotta do much. You just, you know, set and forget. Um, if you have a really nice protective polish charm, that is also still a route. And on top of that, if you are going for the handicraft route, where you're going to bump a couple of these dual blades up to white sharpness, in fact, I would suggest that you, you're going to want the protective polish version. Razor Sharp is more generalized. This is going to be a lot comfier. Um, but if you're really trying to min-max and push it to the limit, I would suggest going the handicraft and protective polish route. Uh, but either way, let's take a look at how these sets are set up. So jumping on into the decos, uh, for our weapon, um, if a weapon has a decoration slot, you're going to slot in an expert jewel. Otherwise, moving on down, we're doing the Utushi mask, which comes with two points of razor sharp and a level one decoration slot, which we can put an elemental deco into. The Alukunaf Thorax, also with a level one deco slot. This comes with one point crit element, two points crit eye, and a built-in dragon attack. Moving on from there, the Lagambi Bam Braces. This has two points of crit eye, one point of ice attack already in it, a level two slot for crit element, and a level one slot for the element jewel of your choice. The Scalda, of course, for two weakness exploit, and then the Remumbra Feet, which comes with one point Wex, and then two level one decorations for your element. So one, two, three, four, five different level one decoration slots to make sure that regardless of what element you're running you can max out that element and then on stuff like dragon or ice you actually gain one free slot because we have the dragon and the ice here so you can slot in um you know you can do brace or dive or whatever you want in that level one slot uh, now as for the necklace this is a razor sharp level two decoration slot uh, if you don't have access to this instead you could do a wex setup you could basically run a uh if you have a wex level two you could run that and then swap out the remember feet for something else but basically you're going to want either a weakness exploit or a razor sharp necklace uh, keep in mind if you are going the handicraft route instead i would suggest going for a protective polish necklace but the point is you're going to want uh, you know you got to have something to put these builds together uh, i can't i can't just set up everything as a baseline um, but taking a look at the loadout 
this is basically the same across as you can see uh, every single one of these builds the only thing that's going to really change between them is the amount of crit eye that a particular build has and that's going to vary uh, depending on whether or not the weapon has decoration slots so to talk about the dual blades in particular first up we have the despots blitz this is a very solid thunder dual blade it has blue sharpness uh, as its baseline it can get white sharpness with handicraft comes with a level two slot it has Thunder Boost 2 on it, putting it up to 200 attack, 31 Thunder. Solid dual blade choice all around. Moving on to Mud Twister. These are from Almudron. These are on the lower end of the base attack at only 170. They come with blue. They stay with blue, but they have high element at 29, and then a level 2 and a level 1 decoration. Uh, these you're going to want to use element exploit, which is quite potent. I want to say it's like a 20 or a 30% damage boost against hit zones of 30 or higher. Um, I don't know the exact math, but I, I remember it's, it's significant. We'll just say that. Uh, moving on from there, Gellert's Soul. These are going to be your ice dual blades. Higher raw here at 220. Only green sharpness, but this can get blue with handicraft. And we have access to ice boost 3, putting our ice all the way up to 33, which is pretty significant. For fire, uh, there is one choice that can get white sharpness, but I still prefer the Twin Flames. Twin Flames has built-in blue, respectable attack at 190, element at 25 fire, and it's just a comfy amount of blue. You know, I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of comfy builds than, than min-max builds, uh, and I think this beats out the other dual blades as long as you are just staying at blue. And then, uh, of course, for this, also element exploit. And then lastly, the Fortis Gran, 180 attack, innate blue. These can get to white with handicraft, 24 dragon element, bit in 15% affinity. And then we can do dragon exploit, which will ramp up your damage against anything classified as a wyvern. So your flying wyverns like Rathalos, Rathian, these will absolutely shred those monsters, especially with that 15% affinity. Um, this one is the, I think this may actually be over 100%. Once I put the set on, I'd have to, to check to confirm. Um, but either way, those are the, the base loadouts. Um, all of them very potent in their own right. 35%. Okay, never mind. This is an 85% affinity when I consider weakness exploit. Um, but let's talk about matchups because the biggest part of elemental and elemental builds in general is making sure that you are hitting the right hit zones and fighting against the right types of enemies. Uh, so to talk about this uh, against something like, say, a Rathian. As you can see here, the Rathian has a 30 elemental hit zone on its head and 25 on its wings. And then we have 20 on the tail, 20 on the torso, 20 on the back. So those are pretty good hit zones. Um, in a lineup against Rathian, I'm going to want to focus the head. But if I'm hitting the torso or the back or the tail or the wings, um, you know, I'm not losing too much damage. Those are all pretty, pretty healthy hit zones there. Uh, now, the head is going to be great because I'll be able to take advantage of weakness exploit for the crit. And it is a 30 elemental hit zone. Um, the crit element will work great here. Now, if I were to go down against something like Tigrix, on the other hand, the elemental hit zones aren't as favorable. We have 25 on the head, which is still pretty nice. Uh, we have 20 on the forelegs, and then we go down to 15s and 10s against the rest of the body. And this is going to be a matchup where you may get good damage if you're staying strictly on the head, but in general, a more raw hybrid focus build will probably pull out ahead on the kill times. These kill times are going to be incredibly close, but it is something I just want folks to be aware of. So to tell what I'm talking about more in depth, uh, if I go to equipment loadouts, we have this setup. This is the crit element setup. If instead you swap out Legambi for Rathalos Brace, you can see how that's changed. I basically lost a bunch of crit eye. Instead, I've picked up attack boost and brought that up to four. Um, and just, I mean, even though we're sacrificing crit element and critical eye, getting attack boost to four actually buffs this up quite a bit. As you can see we're going from 200 raw up to 217 raw, which is, uh, that's pretty dirty there because raw is quite potent in this game. So something to keep in mind something like that will do better against enemies with poor elemental hit zones uh, now of course i also mentioned that some weapons are capable of getting white sharpness if you want to do the white sharpness setup you have uh, sadly very limited pieces available to do that you have the sinister gauntlets which you can put on uh, you have the sinister helm and then the last is a chest that is pretty dated uh, that you may not even want to use but the hunter chest comes with attack handy and a level one and putting on those three pieces, you are able to get yourself up to the white sharpness. And the thing is, white sharpness can be quite significant. 
uh, fact, it's going to give you roughly, uh, I want to say it is 12% more raw damage and 6% more element. So white sharpness is really nice to have. The thing is, though, right now, with the type of gear we have and the type of talismans we have, it's very hard to get enough handicraft to get comfortably into white while still maintaining razor sharp. Uh, so if you are going to do that, like take a look at uh, these, for example, you know, just barely a bit of white there, and that's with four handicraft. So if you're going to do a setup like this, I'd highly suggest you only do it if you have access to protective polish and, uh, you know, you have the whetstone so you can do a single sharpen or you have a uh, protective polish speed sharpening type setup because with a setup like this, as soon as you fall out of white sharpness, the previous crit element builds that were already in blue will become superior. So just something to keep in mind there. Um, otherwise, let's take a look at the switch skills. So first up, Demon Flight or Demon Flurry Rush. Personally, I love Demon Flight. Um, I used to play Aerial Dual Blades in GU. It was one of my favorite play styles. So this is just a, a shoe in for me. Uh, Demon Flurry Rush, this is just how things used to be, uh, which is it's still good, you know. We have, we have that dash, which is, you know, when you combine it with Demon Slash Dodge, it's a lot of extra damage that can be going out. But I am an absolute whore for the, the flight. Uh, I just, I love the flight skill. I love the aerial aspect of it. It's my absolute favorite. Um, so really nice. Uh, feral Demon Mode versus Demon Mode. Honestly, I would just straight up use Feral Demon Mode. Uh, the dodge isn't as far just to kind of show that you know with regular demon mode we have a larger dodge uh and feral demon the dodge is a little bit shortened but in exchange for that uh shorter dodge we attack every time that we dodge the target and on top of that someone did math on it and i think this gives you like a 15 percent raw boost or something uh, either way it's great uh, moving on from here piercing bind or tower vault now these two are really just going to be preference. Piercing Bind is obviously damage, uh, which I don't really think you need to worry about it with Demon Flight. Demon Flight will take care of getting your mounting damage, um, but the whole point of Piercing Bind is to basically put Piercing Bind in, dash, and then do a blade dance to really build up the damage on it, uh, which can be great, but you know, personally, I'm gonna use my wire bucks for my adept dodge most of the time. Uh, the alternative here, Tower Bug, or excuse me, Tower Vault, this is purely a mobility skill. When you press it, it's just going to yeet your guy up into the air. So if you're trying to dodge stuff or you want to go into the air and then do a mid or spinning blade dance, those are going to be your options. But personally, Tower Vault is more utility. Um, so, you know, it's really going to be preference here. I could see the value of being able to Tower Vault to go into your Demon Mode or alternatively going into your Shrouded Vault so you just have more, more mobility with dual blades than you would otherwise. Uh, but piercing bind is nice to have for some extra damage in situations where the monster's down uh, and you're just going to put it in. Uh, one thing I want to point out with, with piercing bind before we wrap up is this move is largely based on the amount of hits you get. So if I put piercing bind in just like that and I leave it, 151. If I put piercing bind in and then I go to town on it, you can see that pop right there for 302. So that is the big trick with Piercing Bind here. If you're going to use it, make sure you're hitting and getting in damage. Uh, but either way, that is going to wrap up the intro for this. Uh, really fun playing Elemental Dual Blades. Like I said, this is the best the weapon's ever been. Either way, let's jump on into a hunt and show you what these bad boys can do. So for our hunt, we're going to be going after a Rathian. Well, I don't think the Rathian is a particularly hard target. Uh, I do think it demonstrates just beautifully... Uh, how ridiculous the, the uh, aerial potential of dual blades can be. Because, um, you know, Rathian likes to, with its tail sweep, it likes to hang out in the air and whatnot. So, really good matchup to kind of show what this weapon can do uh, against aerial monsters now for those that didn't play it back in GU. Uh, but I'm going to be showing you a couple tricks too. Um, some of this I touched on back uh, pre launch with dual blades, but we can do. Um, like, we can do a, a spinning demon blade dance right off the start. What we do is we do R to jump, B to jump, R to demon mode. So R, B, R, and then A. And what that does is it jumps off the dog, or it, it makes the dog jump, and then we jump, and then after we jump, we demon mode, and then we hit A to come on down. So kind of a uh, an interesting thing here. Let me go hit this. Let me stop doing whatever he's doing. Um, also activating feral demon mode will deal damage, so keep that in mind. Like, you actually deal damage just turning it on, so if you get knocked away from the monster and you want to use your recovery to vault towards the monster, you can vault towards the monster and activate Feral Demon Mode for some free damage. 
Um, when it comes to... Ooh, shit! Free Rathi and Ruby, thank you. When it comes to our aerial vaults in particular, there's two things. If you're trying to stay on the target, you're just going to hit X, and that'll have you just do that mid-air blade dance. If you were trying to go the length of the target, that's when you would hit A. Um, hitting A also will direct your character, so you can pick a, a direction that you're trying to go to. Um, so something to keep in mind. You're going to go for another one? No, you're not. Uh, the last thing... So when you are in Arc Demon mode, such as right now, you need to hit X and A multiple times to go through your full combo. So X and A, and then do it again. Oh, I'm getting hit trying to explain stuff. I'm the sky. So you go X A, and then you do X A, and then you have to do a third time to do the full combo. So just keep that in mind, because typically you know you go X A X X A, and then you do X A for your demon. Flurry. Like for your demon flurry, it's just mashing X, and then after the big one, you do one X A, and he rotates through all that shit. And if you're an arc demon, you actually need to hit X A three times to do the full combo. And I think a lot of people. Uh, they they missed that when they were trying to pick up dual blades. doing it, but you can also use your Adept, uh, if, you, if you notice Aurora's coming, you can use your Shrouded Vault, aka Adept Dodge, to just go straight through Aurora. You do need to direct it, that's one thing. Think of it like a parry. You gotta go like that, you gotta, you're trying to do that into the attack. So, where's my dog? Oh, what are you doing, bro? You can see plenty of blue sharpness to, to get through the start of that hunt. Probably getting around ready to cap. This kid, this should be like either right at five or sub five. Oh, R B R A. That was an adept through his face. Just a death dodge and you get the fireball. And you notice that also deals mount damage when we do it. And then we get death through the tail. So that's the thing, man. Shrouded Vault, like, once you get some practice with it, it's honestly kind of disgusting what it's capable of doing. So see how I used A there, even though I wasn't going to mount him, but I used it to uh, direct me closer to where Rathian is at. Get out of the sky. God. Tried to be nice about it, but you just want to stay up there, don't you?
my god, I hate when he starts doing this. He only always does it when he gets tired. But the, the back and forth. To be fair, I was jumping around and showing shit instead of just going pure DPS on the target. Still, though, I think that's probably like a seven minute hunt. Yeah, 707. That's not bad, though. If I wasn't uh, trying to show the the jumping demon dive and uh, the arc demon blade dance and all that. Which I should start doing that stuff in the tutorial portion. But sometimes it's better to show stuff, you know, in action. Uh, but either way, we're going to wrap this one up here. Up next, we're going to be taking a look at the hammer. Which is nice and fun and rise. Very, very reminiscent of World, but just with some minor improvements that I think really kind of bring it to life. So, either way, thanks for tuning on in. Hopefully, y'all enjoy the dual blades. Definitely fun to play, and honestly, I think these are only going to get stronger uh, as we get access to more set pieces, and it's easier to build into sharpness and whatnot. So, closing out here, thanks for watching, and I'll catch y'all next time.